Hello, and welcome to Gunfighter Life, the podcast where we talk about gunfighting the right way, with God at the center, the Judeo-Christian values and worldview, and real-world first-hand experience. Today's episode is designed to be a short episode on a single cartridge. We may talk about some other cartridges in relation to it or adaptations of it. That cartridge that we're going to talk about today, there may be no better all-around hunting cartridge, period. Which is ironic, because it's not a very well-known cartridge. And it kind of flopped more than once. And I would submit that we'll get into later through no fault of its own. Without further ado, you mean you know if you read the title of this episode, the 280, the 280 Remington is a phenomenal, well-rounded, very versatile, all-around big game hunting cartridge on this continent and others. Now, certainly the 30 6 needs no introduction. And most likely, if you know about shooting at all, you know about the 270. The 270 is a very popular hunting round, has been for a long time. The 280 never really has been. And I would submit that it's better than both of those. Or at least as good and as versatile. Now, if you're not familiar, Generally, the two ways the cartridges are named are based on a metric designation in millimeters and a caliber designation in point whatever of an inch. The 280 Remington, 280 is equal to 7 millimeter. 7 millimeter has been known for killing game all over this continent and all over Africa for a long time. The 7x57 Mauser, we did an episode on that one. You may want to go back and give that a listen, but... That's been putting big animals in the dirt for a long, long time. Before the 30 6 was even thought of in concept. And if you look at the 280 Remington, you'll see that it's a superb cartridge. And because it's the 280 is 7mm, you can load 7mm bullets in it. And since the 7mm is so popular around the world, and even here, there's such a wide array of fantastic bullets for it. So I was looking on the Hodgden reloading data, which is a great place to go if you're looking at reloading data. And it lists all the way from 110 grain to 175 grain bullets. 175 grain bullet is big for a 30 caliber round, like a 308 or a 30-06. That's tipping the heavy end, not the heaviest you can get, but pretty close to a very heavy bullet. And you got to think when you do that in a 7 millimeter, you get higher sectional density, which means it penetrates objects better, meaning flesh and bone better in general, all other things being equal. That's what the high sectional density means. And high ballistic coefficient, it has a higher one. Like I said, all other things being similar, it'll have a higher ability to fly through the air as well if it's a good design. And you can scale it down from 110 grain to 175 grain. That's a versatile cartridge. If you don't know, the 280 Remington is based on the 30 6 so any common rifle that can be chambered in 30 6 can also be chambered in 280 Remington. Same length action, same bolt face, all that stuff. Oh, and that was my mistake. If they listed down to a 100 grain bullet, their loading data has uh, just the first one I pulled up, 100 grain bullet at 3,400 feet a second. That's very respectable. And it lists on the heavy end, the 175 grain I believe that's a Hornady bullet going at 2,500 feet a second. With that big heavy bullet and that high sectional density, I can't think of anything in North America that wouldn't be put down by that. And you may be thinking, you know, why not the 7mm Remington Magnum? And the 7mm Remington Magnum is a fantastic gun. I have one sitting above my head right now. It's a fantastic cartridge. I'd say the big thing that the 280 has going for it is its efficiency. It is an amazingly efficient cartridge. It achieves very close to the 7mm Remington velocity with much, much less powder. And if you don't know the formula for recoil, 
the amount of powder gets added into the ejecta mass, which adds to recoil. So it's a more efficient cartridge. And it's not going to require, like we said, because it can go in any gun really based on the 30 6 It doesn't require a magnum length action. It doesn't require that magnum brass. It doesn't require all the extra things that comes with magnum. And personally, to me, the biggest advantage of that is that it doesn't come with that magnum punishment on your shoulder and your shooting technique. You'll see the 280 still hanging on in some lightweight mountain rifles just for that reason. It does great ballistically. It does great at distance. It does great with pretty much any big game species in North America. And it's not going to beat you up. And you can chamber it in a lighter mountain rifle, as they're often called. For those very reasons, you'll see it chambered in a lot of mountain rifles. And I guess we should say that, why is this cartridge not more popular? Well, I'd hate to say this about Remington, but Remington screws a lot of stuff up. Just like they screwed up, I, in my opinion, they screwed up the 6mm Remington by putting it in a twist rate that wasn't appropriate. Remington's kind of notorious for just using a 1 in 12 twist or, or something slower than what's needed. And they did that with the 6mm Remington, which ballistically can be better than the 243, but way more people have and own and know about 243 than the 6mm Remington. Well, something similar happened with the 280. I believe they introduced it in like a pump action or auto loading rifle instead of like a good accurate bolt action rifle to take advantage of its real good characteristics. Now, there's nothing wrong with semi automatic rifles, nothing wrong with the 7400 or the 760 or the 76, whichever one it came out in. They're great rifles. It seemed kind of like an odd pairing. Why would you do that with that cartridge instead of putting it in a, like a lightweight bolt action 700 or, or something similar? And Remington also came out with that as a 2 Remington, 280 Remington. And when it didn't do well, they tried to rebrand it as a 7mm Remington Express, which didn't really work either and maybe just made the confusion worse. I'm not sure. I wasn't really around back then when it was being called the 7mm Remington Express. But same cartridge. And we said we talk about some variants of this or some adaptations of this. And that will be the 280 Ackley Improved. The 280 Ackley Improved, if you're not familiar with P.O. Ackley and his work, a lot of the cartridges we have today came from old school military cartridges. Like we talked about the 270 and the 280 based on the 30-06. While those rounds are designed to work in a military application, let's say in a dirty machine gun, where extraction and dirt and water and ice are a thing, so they're more tapered, which means the extraction is easier, which for a dirty machine gun is important. But for a solid, controlled round or good push feed, good extract and bolt action rifle, it doesn't really have an advantage. So what Ackley did, from my understanding, is he made the case dimensions a little bit better a little bit more advantageous to the civilian hunter and shooter. And he also took the shoulder and made it at a better angle, or I, I guess better is not the right word, more efficient. So you get a little bit more power, a little bit more efficiency, a little bit more potential. And the 280 Ackley Improved does that. And you'll still see the 280 Ackley Improved, like we said, chambered in quite a few rifles in the lightweight hunting world. The 280 Ackley Improved is, just like it sounds like, an improved version of the 280 if the 280 needed any improvement. You look at the numbers of the 280 Ackley Improved and look at the numbers of the 7mm Remington Magnum and see how it does it with quite a bit less powder. Like I said, efficiency. This cartridge is fantastic, and it's kind of a shame that it got screwed up twice in its debut. But the 280... Or the 7mm Remington Express, or the 280 Ackley Improved. I've had it uh, on my heart and mind for a while to do this episode, and God's provided the time to do it. So I hope you liked learning about this cartridge. I really wish that it was more popular. I really think that it is one of the best all-around big game hunting cartridges, period. With that, guys, thanks for listening to this episode of Gunfighter Life. Like I said, a short episode. I'm not even going to put in a bio. If this is the first time you've listened, you can go listen to a bio somewhere else. 
Don't forget to like, subscribe, and please leave a review of the podcast. You know, it's a free, easy way that takes just a little bit of time. Go down and hit some stars and write a review. If you thought this podcast was worth listening to, hopefully you think it's worth writing a review on. If you want to, you can go to Good Shepherd Training and check out some pictures, some big game hunting pictures, some other pictures. Again, goodshepherdtraining.com. If you're listening to this and you want to become a patron and support this message, if you thought it was worth the fraction of the cost of a box of ammo, please consider supporting. And if not, no worries. I will kind of say that we'll be announcing, hopefully, by God's grace and his will, some merchandise soon to sell for the Alpha Male podcast and Gunfighter Life. So if you want to have first crack at that, and hopefully at a lower price, and it wasn't enough to support the podcast or patron, you may want to do that just to get first crack at some cool stuff. Coffee cups coming out and t-shirts and things like that. Anyway, guys, with that, I want to say thanks for listening to this episode. Since we're talking about big game hunting rifles, I'll give you a big game hunting rifle tip. If you're going to sight in your rifle and you're going to sight it in for hunting, hopefully you expect to hit and put that animal down with your first round. Now, if you go sight in your rifle and shoot a bunch of rounds on most hunting rifles, that barrel is going to heat up and give you a different point of aim, point of impact. So after you get done shooting a string of rounds and get it sighted in, let the barrel cool down. Shoot one more round, and if you need to adjust, because your cold bore shot should be the most important one and the most important setting for your hunting rifle. You know, don't just shoot five or six rounds through a typical hunting profile barrel and then assume your gun sighted in, because it could be quite a bit off when that bore is cold. And then if you do have it sighted in on a cold, dirty bore, which it most likely is, don't clean and oil the bore if you're going to go on a hunt soon because that could, again, change your point of aim, point of impact. A little pro tip from professional hunter and guide in my professional hunting and guiding days and shooting days. With that, thanks for listening and have a blessed day.